Welcome to our lecture online. Today we're going to talk about physics again, but this, kind, in this time we're talking about thermodynamics. Now thermo represents heat and dynamics means movement, flow, things like that. So in general it's a, it's a very big topic and we're going to start out by talking about some very straightforward definitions first of temperature and heat. Actually I'm going to talk about heat first. So what is heat? If you walk down the street and ask a person to define heat or to define temperature, you'll find that they're going to have a really hard time doing so. Because it's not very straightforward. We, should, we typically don't talk about heat in terms of physics and science. Uh, heat, you know, we associate with the word hot, but what does that really mean? All right. Well, it turns out heat is a form of energy. So the best way to think about it is that it's a form of energy. Now, there's different kinds of mechanical energy. For example, we have kinetic energy, two objects that are, that are moving, they have kinetic energy because they're moving. Kinetic energy, of course, if you remember, is equal to one-half mv squared. But what happens when those two objects collide with each other and they stop dead in their tracks? They're glued together because of the collision, they stop. Where did all that energy go? Well, it turns out that energy then goes from what we call mechanical energy into heat energy. So heat is a form of energy. As a matter of fact, we use the very same units to describe kinetic energy. It's in joules as we do for heat, which is also in joules. What if we have an object like this and we drop it on the floor? And uh, so it has potential energy and then you let go. It turns potential energy into kinetic energy. But when it hits the floor and then sits there after it hits the floor, where did all that potential energy go? Well, also, it has turned to heat. So we can convert potential kinetic energy, which is mechanical energy, into heat. Just uh, so we remember that potential energy was equal to mgh. So all that energy is then converted to heat. So what is that really then? All right, so let's say we have an object, and that object could contain heat. Matter of fact, most objects, if not all objects in the universe, contain heat. What that means is that uh, we added some energy to the object and we use the letter Q to indicate heat. So that's the typical letter we use to, uh, to represent heat, Q. And when we add Q and we add heat to the object, in, we can do it in different ways. We'll talk about the various ways, but it could be by hitting it with a hammer, colliding two objects together, dropping it on the floor. All those various forms of movement can convert energy into heat. And when we put the heat into an object, what happens then is we cause the atoms and the molecules in the object to vibrate. And when they vibrate back and forth, they have kind of like movement energy, they have kinetic energy. So heat is actually energy put into an object causing the atoms and the molecules to vibrate. So it's kind of storing or locking up heat or energy in the object by having the objects vibrate. If we add more heat to the object, that the object, the, the atoms will vibrate faster and harder and more quickly. And if we take heat away, then the object will begin to slow down and, and vibrate at a slower frequency. So the amplitude of vibrations and the frequency of vibrations is a way in which the object can act, take on more heat or lose heat. So when we add heat to an object, it begins to vibrate and it causes the temperature to rise. Now, we haven't defined temperature yet, but we'll do that in just a moment. Let's see, temperature, let's see if I can spell that correctly. All right, so now we can define temperature. So, heat is a form of energy. Uh, we use the units joules to indicate how much of it we have. We can add it to an object. We can take it away. When we add it to an object, the temperature goes up. When we take it away, the temperature goes down. And so now we can define temperature. Well, temperature, again, you would have a real hard time to really put a definition to it, but it's kind of like a measure. A temperature we can define as a measure of relative hotness or coldness. Now, I don't know if that's a good word, but it kind of describes or does a good job in describing what temperature is. So if you take the temperature of an object, it gives you a relative reading or relative measure of how hot or how cold that object is. Now if you take two objects and put them side by side, and let's say this is a hot object and this is a cold object, 
that means that the temperature of this object is larger than the temperature of this object. So the temperature of this object is greater, and maybe I don't want to do a down arrow, I'll make it up arrow, but I'll make it a shorter up arrow. So you can see that the temperature of this object will be less than the temperature of that object because this object is hot and this object is cold. So it's a relative measure between the two. Now, when you put two objects together that are a different temperature, what's going to happen is that the hot object will lose heat. Q is going to flow from the hot object to the cold object, which will cause the hot object to get cooler and the cold object to get warmer, and it'll continue doing that until the two objects are at the very same temperature. At that point, we reach what we call thermal equilibrium. So let's throw that one in there just for good measure. Thermal equilibrium, remember thermal means heat, so it means heat equilibrium. And thermal equilibrium, or heat equilibrium, equilibrium is reached when all the, well not all, but sufficient amount of heat has moved from the hot object to the cold object to cause them to be at the same temperature. And once they reach thermal equilibrium, the same temperature, heat will stop flowing between them. Or if any heat flows between them, the same amount of heat will flow from one to the other as from the other to the one so that the temperatures will remain the same. Typically speaking, when they're at the same temperature, you're not going to have any heat flow. All right, so now I think we have a pretty good understanding of the three things. Heat is a form of energy. Typically, it's gained or obtained when mechanical energy is converted into useless energy called heat. Because once it goes into heat, it's hard to get it out. And we have to do, a, like, we have to take it out in a very special way, and we'll talk about that later. So when mechanical energy is converted into or when mechanical energy is lost, it's converted into heat. When you put heat into an object, the temperature goes up. When you take heat out of an object, the temperature goes down. Temperature is a relative measure between hotness or for hotness or coldness. And if something is hotter than another object, it'll have a higher temperature. If something is colder than another object, it'll have a lower temperature. And when you put the two objects together, heat will flow from one to the other until the two objects are at the same temperature. So now we have some good foundation of what those things mean. Now we can go and look at some problems. All right, so on to our next video.